guys, I'm Naran Masculinus and this is my 8x8x8 LED cube. Now in this video, I'm going to take you all back in time and show you the entire process of the build. I took some videos, shot some photos on the way and I think what I'll do is kind of narrate a slideshow of the build. We talk about different things like when normally people look at the cube, they just say, how did you solder all those LEDs together? Well, I use the word help lately because I had taken the help of this jig. I built this jig and I'll even tell you how to use it while the process of building. Now the second most common question is, how does this freaking thing work? That seems to be the most be asked question. Because this thing is totally insane. You can just normally count how many solder joints are there. And it, you have 512 LEDs, each LED with two leads, multiply that up. Then you have the railing connections. Then you have the 64 anode leads going to this board here, which are driven by shift register outputs. And the shift register inputs are driven by the Arduino control board. It's insane. So what you do is, let's take a peek, grab a drink, and join me in this reflection. Now, the first thing I did, I made a test board with my breadboard for, to test all the 512 LEDs. So, I just hooked up some 470 ohms resistors and I've given a 12 volt DC supply to check them. <coughs> okay, and now why I'm doing this because once you solder all the 512 LEDs in your 8x8x8 cube, it's very impossible to get access to the inside LEDs like from the center of the uh, cube so once the two major faults which occurs with LEDs are means once uh, the LED doesn't work at all but that's a simple thing to catch because but sometimes the LED lights a bit dimmer like so you don't want to have that kind of dud LED in your cube so I built this uh, small uh, LED testing circuit and I'm gonna check all these 512 LEDs so this here is how it works but now, yeah, so this I've compared it like this so both lights the same equal brightness so that LED is fine so I'm gonna and <coughs> now I'm gonna use, do it for the rest of the 512 LEDs so yeah after testing all the 512 LEDs I built the wooden jig. So first I took a blank paper on that I marked dots with an uh, increment of 2.5 centimeters each. That depends on uh, the length of the cathode leads. Normally they be just 2.5 centimeters. Yeah. So after making that I drilled holes on uh, the wooden piece using a 3mm drill bit. So I had to make total 64 holes. After that, I just laid off the paper and my wooden jig was ready. The next thing, after building the uh, wooden jig, you have to solder all those LEDs into them, to shoulder them afterwards. And now I've used 3.5 mm blue LEDs, as you can see. And each LED has an anode and a cathode. Now the small one is the cathode and the longer lead is the anode. Now you can even uh, find out which is the anode and cathode by looking the inside filament. It's not actually the filament, but it looks like a filament because I, that's why I call it a filament. So never mind. So what I'll do is I'll bend the small lid towards me, that which is the uh, cathode. Here, like this. This is the uh, smaller lead, and this is the bigger lead. And now I'm going to solder this way the LEDs I'm going to shoulder it off so this is how I placed all the LEDs in the jig here is one then comes the second one and here's the third one you have to make sure that the cathode lead has to touch the other lead never mind if it's resting on top or at the sides as long as you get to shoulder them so this is how I uh, shoulder the LEDs I hardly got a millimeter or half to solder them. I begin as a straight line and then I proceeded as per rows as you all can see. 
Then I took a single stranded wire, stripped the uh, insulation off and I soldered it to make the rail connections. The railing connections are important to be made to hold the uh, LEDs in place or they might shake off. So I made one here and the other in the middle but not here because they are the cathode leads of the LEDs itself. Yeah. And after soldering the LEDs from the jig, this is what it will look like 8 by 8 total uh, 64 LEDs which is a level of the cube. Like this I had made total 8 levels and after building the 8th level I thought I was like getting to the end but no I was far far away from making the whole cube because I had to solder the layers one by one and then I still had to build my monster circuit so but no yeah. so after making all the 8 levels I tested them because to make sure there might not be any further falls so this is how I tested it so I grounded the common cathode lead and I just scrolled the positive voltage on top. So after testing all the 8 layers, I started up to build the levels. So what I did is, with the help of a pair of uh, forceps, I bended the top anode leads so I can, uh, as you all can see there, so I could solder them a bit easier. And doing and doing that, I, it took me almost three days and I got a back pain also. But finally, uh, the whole cube was done and it was a nice satisfaction for me. So the cube was the easiest thing than making the whole circuit. So to control my LED cube, I had to make a motherboard. So I bought all the parts including the Adreno. Now what is an Adreno? I'll tell you later. So I got all the parts except the shift registers which are the 20-pin uh, ICs. So I ordered them and they said it would at least take a week to reach. But that was a huge gap following my process of building. So what I did is I didn't wait for it but I just bought 8 20-pin IC sockets and started my work. So on a PCB first I placed the 8 shift register IC sockets followed by the registers and I sorted them beneath. Then I attached the T-pins and I placed the transistors. I placed them in an old fashioned way because I like to do something crazy on my way. Yeah. So I've connected the two transistors in parallel to increase the current rating of them. So then I added the address decoder socket yeah, and the capacitors and the T-pins followed by the uh, layering connections and followed by the uh, pull up resistors. Okay, then I drilled holes on the PCB to place the Arduino board. But before placing the board, I started to make the bottom connections of the ICs and the capacitors too. So first I connected the VCC and ground of all the ICs. And I did the same thing for the capacitors too. Then I did the transistor connections from the Arduino's output to the basis of the input of the transistors and then from the uh, collectors of, from, of the uh, transistors to the layering outputs. Then I connected the output of the address decoder to the clock pins of all the 8 shift registers. And I'm telling you all one thing, uh, address decoder has 3 control inputs and 8 outputs. Okay. So the inputs are those uh, thin blue wires, 3 blue wires and the outputs are the 8 yellow wires okay okay then came the hardest part of all connecting the parallel inputs of the shift registers that was the most irritating part of all time it like took me forever to do these connections one by one one by one the wires were all twisting then I had wires popping out which were to be connected to the Arduino so I did it and I did it. I was like totally just irritating and when I got to the last wire there I just ran off and celebrated. Yeah, because it was like stepping out from the hell. Okay. Yeah, but and after attaching the Adreno board to my uh, motherboard, it looked totally insane. Man, it was looking awesome. Yeah, and that was like huge satisfaction because I was almost coming to the end. Okay, yeah. So, what is an Arduino? 
An Adreno is an open source electronic exporter typing platform based on flexible. Anyway, it's a programmable board that makes you do stuff. The name Adreno describes a microcontroller development system. They are available in many different types. I have used the most common model, the Adreno Uno. This device can be powered by the USB port or the DC power jack. The USB port also does serial programming and communications from a computer. The Arduino is based on Atmela AVR microcontrollers. The Uno actually contains two microcontrollers. The smaller one on the left performs USB serial conversions. Other devices use an FTDI chip for this function. On the right is the heart of the Arduino, an Atmega 328 microcontroller. This is the three hole version. Some versions have surface amount. The pins of this chip is brought out to the headers allowing you to connect whatever you want. This is the Arduino Integrated Development Environment or IDE for short. This program is not actually installed, instead you just download the Arduino folder, put it wherever you want and run it from there. If you get a new piece of hardware like a motion sensor and want to include its libraries to help you code, just put them in the libraries folder. This IDE plus the physical board makes up the Arduino system. This is how I have uh, mounted the Arduino board on my motherboard here. And uh, in this video, I'll discuss the working in short for you all. And I'll even tell you how the Arduino controls my whole LED cube. Now, without the Arduino, uh, the, my LED cube, not even one LED would light. So, I'll just tell you how the Arduino controls the whole LED cube. Now, as you know, there are eight pair of headers connected at the output of the shift registers. Now this is the shift registers. There's an address decoder here and this is my microcontroller uh, at Mela 328. So as you know this is the uh, output of the shift register which is connected to the uh, register to the headers. Now there's a pair of eight wires going from the Arduino to the input of a uh, parallel lead it is connected to the input of all shift registers here and there's a pair of three wires going to the input of the address decoder here it comes from there to here this address decoder and as we know here there are eight outputs for the address decoder which are connected to the clock pins of each shift register here a shift register is having a clock pin so that is connected there so these are the yellow wires which is connected to the uh, mm. clock pin now so what happens here is uh, the Arduino plays the main role here of the manager so this is a uh, supervisor and these are the labors so this one tells this one to switch which uh, uh, pin on so that's how you get a animation or design this is telling this one and this one tells this one so the people like switches on and off with a rapid high frequency so this is the main controller here so he does all the work so these pins here are going for the uh, bases of these transistors which will switch the layers on one two three four five six seven eight layers so these are the headers here which will be connection of the uh, layers here okay so they are one two three four five six seven eight which are gone connected to the bases here as you can see this is the bases and which are connected from here to the uh, <coughs> layering output so you don't have to worry about these capacitors there are lots of and lots of capacitors here you can here see here there are also ceramic capacitors because of a large huge huge output of the frequency which is a um, in mega hertz that's why it is uh, I read a description so that is why the, we have used a lot of uh, capacitors here so each frequent like from VCC to ground VCC to ground VCC to ground so so this is it it's that simple afterwards I went to the back side of my house which was my storeroom okay and grabbed some wooden planks then I cut those with my jigsaw, made an accurate square design and even painted it. And I made a nice box for my LED cube. Then the crimping of the lugs of the ribbon cable connectors were done by my friend Nikhil. He helped me to do that part of the work. So he did total 9 sets and gave me. 
for the eight rows and one layer connections okay then i started to make the connections of the cube i took one pair of the ribbon cable and started from top to down it like went from zero one two three four five six seven i had to do that total eight times and plus one also for the layers and then to make it all a little bit tidy i took a double sided tape and placed it one top of another as you all can see so you guys saw how crazy this thing was getting and i also didn't have a 5 volt power supply i had to make that also because for time being i could only power it from the usb port so i did all the connections connected the wires to my motherboard and also the 20 pin ic's the shift registers also had arrived the day before thought everything looked cool connected to my pc wrote the code to the adreno and nothing happened yes that's what happened nothing then i turned the whole thing off quickly turned the pcb around and found one fault i didn't had grounded the address decoder i remembered that fault then my cube or the whole cube started lighting but there was another problem it was not functioning properly as you all can see in the video there okay it was giving me kind of bugging problems so i thought something was wrong with my code but that couldn't be because i checked two more codes and the same thing was happening again and again to it so my mood just got totally low and i just turned everything off and just went to sleep because it was late at night it was around about uh, 1 30 at night and the next day i removed all the connections including the adreno board and just checked for faults with my multimeter checked the continuity of everything so luckily i found four silly faults okay after remedying all those four silly faults then my led cube started working properly so this is my small discriminant for you guys if you guys build this thing and if it doesn't work please don't come to me and even if you come to me there will be nothing i could do because there could be hundred things wrong at the same time now take the example of my first silly mistake only if i didn't have grounded the address decoder i would just spend maybe days or maybe months or just give up on the whole thing by uh, working on it again and again so I think what you guys do is if you guys build this thing go slow and steady and be more careful with your connections there okay it's because I was in quite of a rush okay so thank you guys for watching till then I'm Noel Mascarenas see you next time